Let's go down to Rome's. So the Minnesota Fighting Vikings will have options this year at quarterback, and they could run it back with Kirk. They could draft a QB. They can do all those things. But if Kirk went elsewhere, which I actually don't think is a smart choice for him, but we'll, we'll get into that, uh, I, the Vikings could be back to the drawing board and an option that's been bandied about because of his weird contract situation with the Denver Broncos is Russell Wilson. That's right. So Russ Probably a future Hall of Famer, Super Bowl champion, a nine-time Pro Bowler, uh, could be on the market as the Broncos, after that really stupid, ridiculous contract, uh, could be letting Russ hit the open market um, by cutting him and then still owing him $39 million. Uh, but I don't know, man. I, I, I just don't know. I can't bring myself to do it. I feel like the Vikings have gone through this gong show of veteran uh, stopgap band-aid quarterbacks, and it just hasn't worked out. So I'm, I'm, I'm in this camp. Now, if Russ doesn't decide with the Vikings, we will do our damn thing and put a positive spin on it. It's like, oh, Russell Wilson is a Super Bowl champion. He knows how to win. Great. Great. But uh, ESPN, uh, Seth Walder over at the analytics department, the numbers say beep, bop, 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 boop, uh, predicting all 32 NFL starting quarterbacks for the 2024 season. Now, spoiler alert, uh, Kirk goes to the Falcons. But also, again, feeding my conspiracy theory that they always put the editor picks little section in whenever, whenever it's Kirk Cousins or the Vikings. And again, this is an alphabetical order. So it's A. Why is this up at the top? You think that you put this in the middle of the article, but whatever. Falcons sign Kirk Cousins again. I disagree with it. Uh, I think that they're a young team and they should grow and show around a young quarterback, but I digress. Uh, but the Vikings, this is what they wrote about Russ. Uh, let's call this Wilson uh, plus uh, Oregon's Bo Nix. Great. Cool. Uh, Cousins might end up back in Minnesota, but I could see the Vikings balking at giving him a multi-year guaranteed contract. If he's out of the picture, Wilson's probably the next best short-term solution. I'm assuming the Bears won't, wouldn't deal Justin Fields in their division. Uh, but don't be surprised if the Vikings go after multiple players to fill Cousins' void. That's what she said. Uh, if they do, acquiring Wilson drafting quarterback at 12 makes uh, the most sense, even though they draft at 11. Uh, so in this scenario, it's Russell Wilson and Bo Nix. Kirko uh, goes to Atlanta. And like we said, the only reason Russell Wilson is palatable at all, at, at all, is his contract quirk. So if and when the Broncos do cut him, they'll owe him $39 million fully guaranteed, which is offset. So any amount of money that he gets paid from his new team uh, is subtracted from what the Broncos owe him up to and including 39 million bucks. So Russ is not going to get 40 million on the open market. Uh, so it's a moot point. Uh, so it would make sense to a help his new team by signing for the league minimum, helping out with the new team's cap uh, cap strategy, as well as sticking it maximum to the Broncos. Yeah. Roll back this Walmart. Yeah. I hear, but uh, again, if Russ was an open market free agent and you're staring down the barrel of paying Russ 40, 45 million per year, ain't going to do it. Ain't going to do it. So this is a, an anomaly, and it certainly is a one-off. But you know, Kirk versus Russ, I mean, Russ was not terrible last year, uh, but, I mean, Kirk was superior in basically every single category. Right. So, uh, again, if you're going to roll the dice on a 36-year-old quarterback, I would much prefer it be Kirk versus Russ, even though you are paying uh, you know, that premium uh, on the cap for Kirk. And no on Russ. Where, uh, again, I, I understand the Russ was very good for a long time. He's probably going to be a Hall of Famer, but he does turn 36 in November. Now, he is not aged like Kirk, where, where Kirk hasn't had the fall off. But with Russ, what was so good about him for a number of years when when he would scramble like Fran Tarkenton and make that playoff schedule and just hit that deep shot uh, downfield, like that. that's when he was at his best. But Deep ball accuracy has regressed. His A dot has gone down precipitously during his couple years in Denver, uh, and I don't think it's all on the offense with Hackett and Peyton. Also, I, you know, the best part about Russell Wilson is him making plays off script. That that's not really what Kevin O'Connell wants to do. Uh, I think he is more of an on script guy. Uh, so I, I I just don't think stylistically uh, their their two games would mesh. He already has a ring, and now if Russ didn't have a Super Bowl. You could see him just like champing at the bit and really getting at for things. But as much as Russell says, oh, I want to win two more Super Bowl rings, blah, blah, blah. Already having that one in your back pocket. And frankly, you should have won another one if Russ didn't throw that pick to Malcolm Butler. Uh, you know, that does change the calculus a little bit on these veteran quarterbacks because his legacy is already set. Like we said, he's probably already a Hall of Famer, but I don't know. Plus, 
Russ, Russ does divide a locker room. And it's so weird because it's not the usual way that you think that someone would divide a locker room by them being an a-hole or a bad teammate. Like, Russ... Russ is honestly like probably one of the best dudes in the league. Yes, he is very polished and PR savvy, and he's a little corny, sure. Uh, but I think at his core, I think Russell Wilson is a good dude. Frankly, I think the world would benefit if there was more people like Russell Wilson out there. But I don't know. like He just doesn't vibe with locker room uh, and his teammates. Like It was very transparent in Seattle, uh, especially you see the way uh, like all the Legion of Boom people talk about him uh, at the end. He didn't get along with Pete Carroll at the end. He obviously didn't get along with Sean Payton, but also I think that's more on Sean Payton. And you could tell like the, the Broncos locker room just really didn't buy into Russ. Now you expect him to come in cold to a Vikings team, which is revved up, ready to go, and really love uh, Kirk Cousins, and you expect them to love Russell Wilson. It ain't going to happen. I think it happened. So uh, I think culturally, like the culture that Quasey and Kevin O'Connor are building, I, I don't think that the juice is worth the squeeze because the one-year deal is an anomaly. I, like, I don't think that bringing in Russell to divide the locker room would be a smart move. And like we said, the one-year deal is an anomaly. So you're paying him league minimum this year. If you want him back in 2025, you're paying full freight, you know, 40, 45 million bucks. So what was the point? So I, I can't do it. I, I I just can't bring myself to be like, hey, we should go out for Russell Wilson. I understand because if the only reason why Russ is appealing for this team in 2024 is the price tag, that, that's a bad reason, right? And uh, I think if the Vikings do bring in uh, a guy like Bo Nix or rookie quarterback TBD, I'd much rather have uh, a bridge quarterback who knows that he's a bridge quarterback, you know, like Nick Mullins or Sam Darnold or Jabroni Br- uh, Brisket or, or whatever. Even though, yes, Darnold and Brisket, uh, uh, Brissett would probably cost more in 2024 than Russell Wilson because of his contract work. So I, I would say, nah, 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 nah. Uh, but your thoughts are thoughts. Uh, ESPN predicts Russell Wilson to the Vikings, Kirk Cousins to the Falcons. Let us know uh, your thoughts and our thoughts and their thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Most important the work, put a little something in the Vedma. But to next time, Skull Production Value.